Folks, it's hardware time. That's right, we've got new products from Apple. They're coming out as I am recording this right now. We are basically doing this in real time. So it's been a while since Apple has done press release only releases. We've had events for pretty much all Apple products since the pandemic started over two years ago. But just today, Apple unveiled a new Apple TV 4K, a new version of the iPad Pro, and a redesigned base model iPad that I'm very interested in. So there's a lot to talk about here. Let's get into it. All right, so let's jump right in with these press releases and start with the Apple TV 4K. This is not something Apple updates all that often, and when they do, it's usually very minor, and this year is no different. The new Apple TV features the A15 Bionic chip and brings HDR10 Plus support with it. There's a whole bunch of blur with filler text here, but the headline is that new A15 chip and a new lower starting price of just $129. So, Honestly, I think that's a pretty decent price point. Again, this is not gonna blow you away. It's an Apple TV, they just stick a new chip in it, but at least they made it cheaper. And $129, I think, is a very attractive price point for what is realistically one of the best streaming devices out there. It's just that it's always been a little bit pricey. I think 129, I think it's pretty good. And so now, we gotta talk about the iPad Pro, unfortunately. I've got mine here, it's the M1, 12.9 inch, with the mini LED, and my review for this last year was basically, wow, don't, don't bother. It's fine, it's good, just get a used one. Just get a refurbished one, 2018, 2020, what have you. The mini LED doesn't make a huge difference, the M1 definitely doesn't make a huge difference. And so you would think now with four years of iPad Pros on this design, maybe Apple would come up with something new. Well, no. The new iPad Pro features the M2 chip. So yay. The new features are basically summed up in two sentences by Greg Joswiak, who says, Powered by the M2 chip, the new iPad Pro features incredible performance and the most advanced technologies, including a next-level Apple Pencil hover experience, ProRes video capture, super-fast wireless connectivity, and powerful iPadOS 16 features. There's nothing else like it. Uh, I actually beg to differ. There is something that's very much like it, and it's this. It's the old one. It's the same thing, Greg and Tim. So the M2 chip that Apple is including here is the eight core CPU and the 10 core GPU. Now, as with the M2 Max, those upgrades are good for about 12% CPU performance and up to 35% on the GPU. But of course, you're not going to notice that because it's still an iPad and it still runs iPad OS. So the main feature is performance. That's the one thing that the iPad Pro has not needed in four years, but that's the only thing that they keep changing. The performance of M2 turbocharges even the most demanding workflows from photographers editing massive photo libraries and designers manipulating 3D objects. I'm sorry, but I don't know that many people that are doing 3D modeling on an iPad Pro. Now, the M2 chip also gives this thing a new media engine, an image signal processor, which enables ProRes video for the first time. But again, it's an iPad. How many people are out there holding their iPad up like this? They're like, oh, I gotta record this video. I'm gonna stare into the center screen of a Tesla and I'm gonna record this ProRes video and then I'm gonna edit it here in this tablet in iMovie. I'm a professional and I exist and this is a real workflow. No, I reject that. Now the next feature, um, it's a little weird. So they're calling this Apple Pencil Hover Experience and basically it detects the Apple Pencil up to 12 millimeters above the display uh, so it can show you a preview of where you're going to touch the screen before you actually touch it and 
uh, a cool, I guess. I guess that's nice. I, I definitely don't think I would buy a whole new iPad for that. Other features, uh, it's got Wi-Fi 6E, so that's nice. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow, riveting stuff. However, there is something for us here that's gonna blow your mind, and that is that now you get a braided USB-C charge cable. Wow. All right, so next up we have probably the bigger news of the day, a new base model iPad. Except that it's not a base model and it's not really all that new. So Apple says that they have unveiled a completely redesigned iPad in four vibrant colors. If you compare it to the iPad 9th generation, sure, it does look different. However, uh, the term redesign, I think here is uh, particularly generous when you consider that uh, basically what they did was they took the iPad Air from 2020 and they uh, painted it. And that's what this is. So yes, these colors, certainly vibrant. I will give them that. However, if we go down here, things start to look a little familiar, right? We've got a 10.9 inch liquid retina display an A14 Bionic chip, an ultra-wide 12 megapixel front camera, a 12 megapixel back camera. Yeah, that's the same screen resolution. Uh, that's basically the same brightness and true tone. We got Touch ID and the power button. The only thing that is different about this, as far as I can tell, is that the camera is on the side here. Look at that. Thank you, Apple, for doing that. But also, screw you, Apple, because, folks, you're not going to believe this. The M2 iPad Pro that costs $1,000, it still has the camera in portrait orientation, which means it's still going to be weirdly on the side when you're doing calls. But the base model iPad, that one has a landscape camera. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? I guess what? It gets worse. So the new base model iPad, and I'm using heavy air quotes for that because obviously, um, they have a new keyboard case. It's the all new Magic Keyboard Folio. And basically what we have here is this little guy that magnetically snaps on the bottom and we have a separate guy that snaps on the back, magnetically of course. Now that's all well and good. However, this is an iPad 10th generation exclusive, which means you can't use this guy from your 11 inch iPad Pro, even though it fits the iPad Air 4th generation that they copy and pasted to make this thing. And then there's the price, okay? It's $449 to start. So you can't really call the 10th generation iPad the base model iPad anymore because it isn't. So we just now have two tiers of this. Uh, just to make your life more confusing, but for 449 with only 64 gigabytes, I don't know, that, that, that seems a little tight to me. And the fact that they gave it the new design, but not the new Apple Pencil? Come on, man. What are you doing here? Wait, how would you even charge? Oh my god, it comes with an adapter? Bro! What are you doing? You're shipping an iPad with a USB-C port? that only works with an Apple Pencil that has lightning, and so you put an adapter in the box? You really couldn't have just made it work with the newer Apple Pencil? Really? That was too much to ask. And if you already have it, they're gonna charge you $9 for the adapter? Ah! Uh, you're killing me, Tim! What is this update, bro? I'm deceased. They really screwed this up, folks. I'm not gonna lie. This whole upgrade just feels kind of stupid to me because on their own refurbished store for an extra 20 bucks, you can get yourself the same exact iPad, but it works with the regular keyboard case and it works with the regular magnetic Apple Pencil that doesn't need that stupid adapter. The whole point of the base model iPad is that it's a trickle down of the older designs with a newer internal and a really low price. It's the iPad SE for all intents and purposes. But then they did this 
And by the time you actually buy it, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, let's say we want it in blue. Realistically, 64 gigabytes is not enough. So we'll go for 256. We don't need cellular. Well, I mean, I guess we'll get the Apple Pencil for 100 bucks. Uh, and we get that stupid ass little adapter. And then we'll go ahead and add the Magic Keyboard Folio. And look at that. It's a thousand dollars. This is supposed to be the cheap one. So yeah, this update was a little bit weird. Uh, I can't say that I plan on buying the M2 iPad Pro. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should make a video on it, but honestly, it is so nothing that I don't even think it's worth reviewing. The fact that they were too lazy to even give it the landscape camera just really speaks volumes about what a low effort update that was. Now, the base model, but not base model iPad, that I think is more interesting. You know, eventually in a couple months when these are on sale for $70 off, maybe, just maybe, it would be an okay price somewhere in the $300 range. I like the colors, but apart from that, it's a copy paste of the iPad Air fourth generation for very little difference in price without the support of the newer Apple Pencil for no obvious reason. I do like the landscape camera, so that's one thing that this thing has going for it. But apart from that, I mean, kind, kind of lame updates today, I'm not gonna lie. And I get that these are, you know, minor updates. They're press releases, they didn't even have an event for this. We're not supposed to get excited about this stuff. But they could easily have just been a little bit better. The iPad Pro hasn't been significantly changed in four years. It's overdue. This base model iPad could have been $399, supported the regular keyboard cases, so you don't have to buy this other new one for some reason, and use the regular magnetic Apple Pencil. Just, just simple stuff like that they could have done and made this a much better product. But that being said, I think I'm going to pick up the base model iPad the, or the second to base model iPad. Let me know what you guys think about all of this and I will see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh God. This is not lit.